So today I'll be releasing a new update to the Force Transitions Pack. If you haven't seen it yet, it's the drag and drop transitions pack that actually works with DaVinci on the edit page within the effects library. I initially released it when DaVinci Resolve 16.2 first came out. Now we're on 16.2.1. There were a couple of things that uh, I noticed I was getting concerns with. So I went in and I adjusted some of those things. The first one, all of the transitions still work the same way, but by default, they do not have motion blur on. You can turn it on, but it's just not on by default. So if I come up here and I, let's grab some uh, clips, and let's say we cut that in just a little bit, and let's grab another clip, cut that in, and we'll take that space out. So like right here, I want to put a transition. I can come in and any of the transitions we can grab. So let's grab one of the spins. So we'll drop a spin in. And so by default, it's going to look kind of weird, right? So if I play that, it's going to look kind of weird. Uh, the big thing that sells these transitions is the motion blur. So we'll just click on it and click enable motion blur. With some people's computers, depending on the hardware you have, uh, dropping this on and then it automatically calculating the motion blur, uh, doing everything at once, it was crashing some people's uh, DaVinci Resolves. So I think like this might be a better way in which to do it for everyone's system. I know some systems, uh, like when I was testing on mine, I didn't have that issue. When I was testing on my uh, five-year-old MacBook, it was perfectly fine. But for some systems, uh, they were experiencing crashing. So by default, dragging it on and then coming over and uh, turning on the motion blur. As we can see here in this particular shot, if I go full screen, we can see it's kind of steppy. Now, it really depends on how fast your transition is. If you make it a little smaller, you won't really be able to see that because it'll just go so quick. Actually, let's turn on uh, caching. So we'll come up to playback, render cache, smart cache, and now they'll be caching here. So this will quick cache, but uh, by, so by default, uh, you know, it going real quick like that, we couldn't even see the stepping. And the reason why I say that is because if you turn up quality, it's just going to use uh, a couple more resources to make that uh, transition smoother. Uh, but if it's really fast, you don't even notice it, so it's not worth spending the extra uh, compute time. But let's say we did want to make this smooth. You could turn this all the way up, and let's say that that's not smooth enough because it's still a little steppy. You can just come in here and type any number you want. So let's double that and go to 20. We can see we're getting it a bit smoother. We could go bigger, uh, but like I said, these are going so fast that that isn't really necessary. But I just wanted to make you aware that you can make this number higher outside the range um, that you can drag it between. So once you do that, as you can see here, now we have it uh, cached and we can play that and it looks great. Um, the next thing, let's actually get two clips here that look completely different. The next thing is I added in a couple of new transitions. So we have this new uh, wobble. Like I said, everything by default, the motion blur is off. So you just want to turn that on and then I will let this cache quick. All right, let's play it. So there is that just little wobble when it gets up to the top. Uh, again, the motion blur is what really helps sell that. Uh, one of the others that I uh, added in are these new twists. So we'll just add in a twist here. Again, that whole motion blur thing. Um, if DaVinci Resolve gets better with how uh, motion blur, when you drop a transition in at a later time, I can always uh, revert that. But for now, I felt like that would be best so that everyone uh, can use these transitions without DaVinci Resolve just crashing right out of the gate. Okay. So we play that again. There we go. That's how that one is. And as you can see, when it gets into to a lot of movement, we have the stepping. So you just have to come in and turn that up and that gets a little bit smoother. So that's pretty much it. The other thing that I did want to, uh, to state is because now we don't have the motion blur on, I was also getting comments when people would do like these slips like this, you can see like in the, uh, when it's showing them, um, they were saying like when they were sliding them that they were also crashing. And I was able to slide before and it was updating, but it doesn't look like it's updating in the window here. Um, but I just did want to make that known that 
with the motion blur off this is a lot easier to slip between so now we can see this up this top one here actually changing uh, let me actually turn that back on and see what happens here okay it's not really updating up there now but um, i was getting some people stating that because they use that for uh, editing that that was uh, being an issue the super all of these supers for some reason i don't know why but when you add them in i didn't have the dynamic on there for some reason i don't know why i didn't have it on there but i didn't have it on there but now all of the dynamic stuff works for all of the super pushes so that was pretty much it to summarize uh, all of the motion blur is off by default it's an easy one click to turn it back on you can change the level of quality for the motion blur to whatever number you want the other things are that we fixed the dynamic for all of the super pushes we added in twist and we also added in push wobbles uh, so before i believe the pack was at 33 transitions now it went to 39 with this update if you've already purchased the pack uh, you should have received an email and in that email it'll have a link if you didn't get the email all you have to do is log into your account uh, your downloads will reset. You can then download the pack. Inside the pack, there is a little video that explains how to update. All it really is, is the same update process. You just highlight everything, drag it in, but because the names are going to be the same, it's going to ask you if you wanna overwrite. But that kind of summarizes this uh, mini update for uh, the Force Transitions pack. I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, for the couple of people that were having some crashing, I hope that this resolves it for you, at least for applying them into your project. Um, if you're still having crashing, adding the motion blur on, uh, it really would come down to uh, probably not having the resources to uh, compute um, such an effect. That is something that you would at least be able to figure out and not have it just crash right out of the gate. So yeah, with that being said, I hope you all stay safe and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good one, guys. Thanks.